Moving on to navigation rules. Thus far we have hard-coded our navigation. For example, in the facelet we might have a command button where the action is set equal to the next view name. The extension .xhtml will automatically be appended to main menu and that will become the next page that is rendered, the next view. Alternatively, what we might do on the command button is to set the action equal to some kind of action method in a managed beam. That action method has the responsibility of returning a string with the name of the next view to render. What we might do then from check credentials is to return the string main menu so that successful credential checking will result in the main menu being displayed. One of the things that we might do is to say, right, okay, if this checking fails, I'm going to throw an exception. Or we could return an alternative string. We could say there are going to be several outcomes. And in the check credentials method, if everything is okay, we'll return main menu. Else, we'll return error page. And that now gives us, still hard-coded, two routes from the button click. We'll either go to the main menu or we'll go to an error page. Now this introduces the idea that for one button click, there might be more than one outcome. Now being software engineers, that should not sit well with you. The idea of hard coding concepts such as navigation. People change their mind, developers change their mind, business requirements change all the time. And so hard coding some route through your various views should not sit well. As software engineers, we really want to separate responsibilities. It should not be the responsibility of the action method to decide which view comes next. That's not its job. Check credentials has the job of checking credentials, not check credentials and decide on the next view. And I've mentioned in the past that whenever you're thinking about responsibilities of a method, if you're having to use the word and, then you're doing too much in that one method. So let's take a slightly different approach and instead of returning the next view, let's report the outcome, success or failure, or some other kind of label that you might want to give to the outcome. If we're going to do that, then we're a step towards separating concerns. What we can do is to remove those navigation rules from being hard-coded in the methods and in the facelets and take it out into a separate XML file. And what we'll do is associate an outcome with a button click. We don't quite use those terms, but that's what happens. When a button is clicked, there can be more than one outcome. So let's say, right, a button click in this view, when we're coming from a view, there could be an outcome one and an outcome two. With outcome one, we'll go to a new view. And with outcome two, we'll go to a different view. We can encapsulate that information, those navigation rules, inside this XML file. Now that means we've got to have a view of how our users are going to navigate through the system from one view to the next. I call this the page navigation diagram. It's not a standard diagram by any means. It's just my way of documenting the decisions that are made about, well, when I'm in a particular view, I can go to another view if I get this outcome or a third view if I get a second outcome. So we can see here, for example, we've got the index facelet that's being displayed. We click on the submit button. That's going to generate some kind of call to an action method. That action method will then return an outcome of success, in which case we'll move to this view here. Now clicking on back, that's another command button. So that will, in this case, be hard coded into the facelet code. So command button, action equals, but we no longer put the name of the view. We put the outcome, the name of the outcome, which is the label on this arrow here. So the outcome on clicking this button will be back. The outcome of clicking this button, calling a method and getting a string in return that says success will take us to here. So there are two ways of generating these outcome labels. One is to click a button, call an action method and get a string in return. Or in the facelet code on the command button tag, you can hard code the outcome into the action attribute. Either way, what we're doing is returning outcomes, not the name of the next view. 
Now, outcomes are much less likely to change when you make a decision about some different way of navigating through the system. The name of the outcome will still be success. It just might take you to a different page. The XML file looks a little bit like this. It's called faces-config.xml and it sits in the webinf folder that's inside in NetBeans, it's inside the web pages section of your project. There are some other bits of XML in the file, but the part we're going to focus on here are the navigation rules. And you can see a navigation rule being defined here. This is a rule when we are moving from this view. So when we move from index.xhtml and we get this outcome, then we will go to this view. <coughs> so it's really very simple to do that. We can have multiple navigation cases for a particular rule. So when we're coming from index, let's say that was check credentials. Well, we might have two outcomes, a success and a fail. In which case, we would have two navigation cases, one for each of the possible outcomes. When we have an outcome of success, we'll go to one view, and then a different navigation case, but still inside the navigation rule element, we'll have another navigation case where the from outcome is failure, and then we'll define a different to view. Now to draw up an XML file like this, it means you need to have a very clear view of what paths your user is going to want to take through your application. And so the kind of diagram on the previous slide is going to be very useful, except it's going to have a lot more than just two little views. And it can become quite complicated. So you will need to be very thoughtful about how you set this up. If you've got 10 or 20 or even 100 different views, you will need to know that for each view, I can go to the next view following this arrow with that outcome label. And that's going to define for you all navigation cases for each navigation rule when you move from one view to the next. So if you're on your diagram, you've got three arrows coming out of a view that tells you that you're going to need a navigation rule for that view with three navigation cases, each with their own outcome. Then, of course, you're going to have to make sure that the action method that is called when the button is clicked on that original view produces three possible outcomes. How do we set up this XML file in NetBeans? Well, if you right click on the WebInf folder, which is inside web pages, then select New and Other, then come down to Java Server Faces and the JSF Faces configuration. That will create, as we can see in the description down here, a new Faces config XML file. Please check that there isn't one already in the project. Sometimes it's generated for you automatically. If it's there, then just go in and put in your navigation rules. If it isn't there, then this is how you would create it. So two fairly simple concepts that we've looked at today. And when you have completed the tutorial work, you will have gained experience in creating messages, associating those messages for specific UI components, and also setting up global messages, and then displaying those error messages right next door to the UI components that they're associated with, or only global messages. And you'll have also had some experience with setting up navigation rules. But remember, those navigation rules for you to be really successful in terms of getting the XML file correct will require you to have a fairly accurate navigation diagram first. Think about all the views that you're going to have in your application and then draw arrows to show the permitted paths from one view to another. Give each of those arrows a label and those labels become your outcome.